everyone, and thank you for joining us today for our session on Ages and Stages of Car Seats. My name is Aubrey Click. I'm from the Delaware Office of Highway Safety. I'm the Fitting Station Coordinator for Kent and Sussex Counties. First, I'd like to review Delaware's Child Restraint Law. Our Child Restraint Law says that all children must be properly restrained in a federally approved child safety seat appropriate for the child's age, weight, and height up to eight years of age or 65 pounds, whichever comes first. The child safety seat must be used and secured according to the manufacturer's instruction. Additionally, children eight through 15 years old are required to be properly secured in a seat belt Children under 12 years old or 65 inches in height are still required to sit in the back seat if there are active airbags in the front passenger seating position. Our first stage of car seat starts with the infants. Infants can use either a rear facing only seat or a rear facing convertible seat. Rear facing only seats are also referred to as infant carriers, and that would be a seat like the one that is pictured in the photo. Rear facing only seats generally last about one to one and a half years. This type of seat is outgrown when a child has reached the height or weight limit, or the child has less than one inch of space above their head to the top of the car seat shell. Height and weight limits for car seats can always be found on the labels on the car seat. If you cannot find it on the labels on your car seats, you can always check your car seat manual. A rear facing harness on a child should come from at or below the child's shoulders. Their chest clip should be at armpit level and the strap should be tight enough to pass the pinch test. The pinch test is pictured in the photo in the bottom right. On the left hand side, you can see that that caregiver is not able to pinch any extra of the strap up at the child's shoulders. In the right hand photo, you can see that they are able to pinch that strap up at the shoulder, so that harness would need to be tightened a little bit more. And in the photo on the left, this shows that the harness should be coming from at or below the shoulders. While we're talking about the infant stage, I'd like to talk a little bit about extended rear facing, because this goes from those infant seats and moves on to the convertible seats. Children should remain rear facing as long as possible. This is to the upper height or weight limit of rear facing mode of their convertible car seat. So after they've moved on from that infant carrier, or that rear facing only seat, they're gonna move on to a convertible car seat and convertible car seats rear face and then forward face later on. Rear facing car seats keep a child's head, neck and spine in a straight line in a collision. This reduces the risk of serious spinal injuries. Here is a photo from a crash test that I love to share. You can see in the top left hand corner, there's a timestamp on each photo. So these are from the exact same time of the crash. The rear facing child on the left, their head, neck and spine has stayed in a straight line during this collision. The forward facing child on the left has had quite the opposite reaction here. And their head, neck and spine are very curved and bent. I often get asked, well, if they're supposed to rear face longer, where do their legs go? And their legs can go anywhere they want. They can bend them, they can put them on the vehicle seat, they can put them over the side of the car seat if they want, truly anywhere they want to go. Leg space is not a concern. I also get asked, well, if my child's rear facing and their legs are bent, won't their legs break if we're in a crash? Lower limb injuries are actually very rare in rear-facing children. 
the hips naturally splay up and out, which moves the legs away from the vehicle seat back. And here's an example of a big kid rear facing. This is my own daughter. She was five years and 10 months at the time of this photo, and she still fit the rear facing height and weight limits for her car seat. So I just wanted to show an example of a bigger kid rear facing, and you can see that her legs are bent and that is not an issue. So now we'll talk about those convertible car seats that rear face and then transition to forward facing. Most convertibles on the market can rear face up to at least 40 pounds. This is your average four-year-old. Some convertible car seats now come as an all-in-one seat and they'll convert all the way to booster mode. Children should remain in rear facing mode until they reach the upper height or weight limit of that rear facing mode. This is generally between the ages of one and through the age of three, so up to four. Wanted to give some examples of convertible car seats. So the convertible on the left is just for rear facing and forward facing mode. Okay, and then the one on the right hand side, you can see that it converts to a booster. Both of these are considered convertible car seats. The next stage car seat after that would possibly be a forward facing combination seat. These seats should last you through the ages of four to seven. These seats begin as a harness seat and then convert to a booster seat. Children should remain harnessed until they reach the upper height or weight limit of harness mode. Again, those height and weight limits will be able to be found on labels on the car seat. And if you cannot find them on your labels on your car seat, you can always check your car seat manual. Harnessing for a forward facing child is slightly different than for a rear facing child. For forward facing, the strap should come from at or above the shoulders. The chest clip should still rest at armpit level and the strap should be tight enough to pass the pinch test still. So remember, if you can, if you can pinch that harness at the shoulder and you're able to grab any extra, that harness needs to be tightened up just a little bit more. The next stage car seat is a booster seat. They can come as high back boosters or no back boosters. High back boosters provide side, back, and head support. High back boosters help a newly transitioning, transitioning child to remember to sit up straight and stay in proper positions. Both of these types of seats come with shoulder belt guides. So for the high back booster, you can see those shoulder belt guides right here up by that head restraint. Okay, and the no back boosters, they usually have a shoulder belt guide that's attached to like a little strap, kind of looks like an extra piece, usually falls out of the box. It's an extra strap that attaches to the seat. It can be used as a belt guide. One of the most common questions I get from caregivers is when can we get rid of this harness? A large component of booster readiness is maturity. Children must be able to sit up, sit still, and stay in proper position for the entire ride, even if they fall asleep. The minimum recommended age to put a child in a booster seat is five. Then another question that we get asked a lot is when can we get rid of the booster seat? Seat belts are made to fit the average adult male. So the average height for a human to fit a seat belt is four foot nine. Most children do not attain that height 
until between the ages of 10 and 12. So to be able to get rid of a booster seat, children must be able to sit with their back flat against the seat, their knees must bend naturally over the edge of the seat, their feet should sit flat on the vehicle floor, the seat belt should rest between the neck and the shoulder and across the thighs, and they must be able to sit properly for the entire ride. Until they're able to check off all five of those items, they will still need a booster seat. We call this five-stepping. So this is just a little graphic to give a visual of what needs to happen for a child to be able to ride without a booster seat. And again, to ride safely, most kids need a booster until ages 10 to 12. And then the bigger kids are always asking, when can I sit up front? So we often get asked, well, when can my child sit up front? Legally, at 12 years old, or five foot five, they can sit up front. But the safety recommendation is that children should remain in the back seat until age 13. Children's bones need this time to mature. Sitting in the front seat requires the child to be able to take the impact of an airbag if you were to get into a collision. So they need that time until they're 13 for their bones to grow and mature. Where can you get help? Well, we're always happy to help at the Office of Highway Safety Fitting Stations. For Kent and Sussex counties, you would be calling myself, Aubrey Click. My phone numbers are listed on the screen, or you can email me as well. And then for the Newcastle County Fitting Station, we have Sean Rowe. Her phone numbers are also on the screen, or you can email her as well. If you need any more information, you can please visit ohs.delaware. Gov. And if you have any questions about today's presentation or any questions in general, please feel free to reach out. Thank you so much for joining us today for Ages and Stages of Car Seats.